All right, we are back. This is math 200. We're looking at chapter eight um, from the Newton notes, the packet, and we're looking at 8.4. So adding, subtracting, multiplying, radical expressions. So remember radicals have square roots on them. So before we jump in here to these first problems, let's recall when we had like seven X plus 12 X, what we did there was we would add the coefficients. So the numbers in front are called coefficients. So 7x plus 12x, that was 19x. And that's it. So we didn't change the power, we didn't change the variable. That's how that worked. We're going to do the same thing now with radicals with square roots or cube roots or fourth or fifth roots. Um, so look, this is one, one square root of three plus seven square roots of three. That is eight square roots of three. And again, if we think about what's going on there, we've learned how to factor. We could factor out a square root of three out of both of those. And then we would just have one plus seven if we factored out the square root of three out front like that. And then one plus seven is eight. And then eight times the square root of three is just eight square root of three. So I'm not saying do that. Don't do the factoring thing. That's why we get to add one square root of three to seven square roots of three and get eight square roots of three. All right, same deal. 10 square roots of two minus four square roots of two. You kind of put the square root of two on a holding pattern. That's gonna stay the square root of two but then 10 minus four is six. So that is six square roots of two. All right, these are unlike terms. <laughs> That's like saying X plus Y, you can't do it. These are unlike terms because it's the square root of two plus four cube roots of two. It has to be the same index. So those are also unlike terms. Both of those are unlike terms and you can't add them. Okay, so now we go on to the next section where they look like they're unlike terms, but they're not. It's misleading because look, this sum um, can be broken into perfects and leftovers. The square root of 25 times the square root of 3, remember the negative is in front of there. Plus, this can be broken into perfects and leftovers. The square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And this one's already broken down three square roots of three. So that was kind of a pretty big hint on their part to throw the square root of three there, right? And so look, the square root of three, square root of three, square root of three. All right, so this is negative. The square root of 25 is five times the square root of three, or negative five square roots of three plus two square roots of three plus three square roots of three. <laughs> so look, negative five plus two, we can do that. That is negative three square roots of three plus three square roots of three. And then we have negative three square roots of three plus positive three square roots of three. That is just zero. <laughs> so that's kind of a weird one because it's zero. All right, uh, let's do this, number two. So the cube root of 64, that's a perfect cube already. You could do that in your calculator. 64, remember 64 to the parenthesis one divided by three and parenthesis power is four. So we got four plus the cube root of 14 minus nine. Well, I can't do anything with the cube root of 14. That is um, two times seven, and neither one of those are perfect uh, cubes, so that cannot be fixed. It's the, that stays the cube root of 14. But I can put four and negative nine together and get negative five plus the cube root of 14. And that's it. All right, let's continue. There's one more on the bottom of page, um, this page here. And a note packet, let's get rid of that stuff. All right, so we've got, um, Three, oops, I don't know what I was writing there. This is uh, the first example. Three 
square roots of 45x to the third plus x square roots of 5x. Okay, so again, there are two ways to break this down. I will show the other method this time in the notes here. So three, first, perfects and leftovers. Perfect in 45 is 9x squared. That's all perfect. Then the leftover bin here, 9 times 5 is 45, and x squared times x to the first is x to the third, plus x to 5x. Okay, so now look at what happens. This is a perfect square, so we have 3 times 3x times the square root of 5x, plus x squared to 5x. And then 3 times 3 is 9x square roots of 5x plus 1x square roots of 5x, right? There's a 1 there, even though there's not, you know, normally. And so this is similar to when you were adding, like, terms and you had, like, 7x squared y plus 5x squared y, something like that. And so you had two different variables but those are still like terms, so you still wrote 12x squared y. You did not change the power or on the variables, you just left that x squared y, and you just added up the numbers. Maybe the same thing here, we have 9x squared to 5x plus 1x squared to 5x, so 9 plus 1 is 10, but then the x squared to 5x stays exactly the same. So just like what we were doing when we were combining like terms in the past, it's just now they've got roots on them, so it's a little weird to look at is all. Now, another way to attack the square root of 45x cubed, break that down into its simplest radical form. Remember, SRF, simplify, either simplified radical form or simplest radical form, um, is you bust it down into all primes. So that's 9 times 5, that's 3 times 3 times 5 times x times x times x. And now you do it like, I told you I had a former student who called this prison break style where two, groups of two to get out, but only one lives, two to get out, only one lives. And then that one's stuck and that one's stuck, so the square root of 5x. And so there we are again with 3x square root of 5x. Now you might say, but wait, it was 9. Well, I just focused on that part. There was still the times 3 there. That would be, still be there. So, all right. Okay, let's look at next page. We've got, oof. so we're going to do a common denominators. So what happens there? Let's take a look. We've got the square root of 45 over 4 minus the square root of 5 over 3. So remember how we play common denominators. Well first, the square root of 45 also, we fixed it already. We can fix it again. That is, the square root of 45 is the square root of 9 times the square root of 5, so it's 3 square roots of 5. So that is 3 square roots of 5 over 4 minus the square root of 5 over 3. But we still need a common denominator between 3 and 4. Um, they're relatively prime, meaning they don't have anything in common. So you just multiply them. 4 times 3 is 12. So I want a 12 on the bottom in the denominator on both of them. So now I kind of work backwards. This I had to multiply by a 3 to make it be 12. So then I have to do that to the top. So I got 9 square roots of 5 up there. This one I had to multiply by 4 to make it a 12, so I got to do that on the top. So I got uh, 4 square roots of 5. So 9 square roots of 5 minus 4 square roots of 5 is, let's see, we'll write it out. 9 square roots of 5 minus 4 square roots of 5 all over 12. So since we had that common denominator 12, I put it down once. And now I subtract those. So 5 square roots of 5 over 12. And there's our answer. There's our answer. So all things that we've done before, that just they're kind of merging them all into one thing. How about when we're multiplying? So remember, you can multiply things as long as they have the same index. So if it's a square root times a square root, you can multiply the numbers in front. 
or inside rather. If it's a cube root times a cube root, you can multiply the numbers that are inside. And then maybe even see if you can evaluate them. So let's take a look at what that looks like. And so we got um, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 minus the square root of 2. So we multiply that. That is the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9 minus the square root of 3 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 6. But I can simplify this. Uh, the square root of 9 is 3. So it's just 3 minus the square root of 6. And then that's it. We're done. That's all. We can't do anything else. Can't do anything with the square root of 6. That's all. All right, 2 square root of 3 minus 8 times the square root of 3 plus 8. Oh, so these are conjugates, right? That's a minus and that's a plus. They're not opposites because that doesn't have a, this doesn't have a minus on it also. If it was minus, minus, and then that was plus, plus, then it would be opposites. But since only one of them changed, this is a conjugate. So let's see what happens when we multiply a binomial with a radical and its conjugate. We're going to get this. That is the square root of 9. We're going to get this. That is plus 8 square roots of 3. You always put the number first, never second. You always want the square root to be right justified. That way you don't are never confused. Is the 8 under the square root or not? Um, negative 8 square roots of 3 and negative 64. And so look at what happens. Plus 8 square roots of 3, minus 8 square roots of 3, those cancel. Ooh, the square root of 9 is 3 minus 64. And so now those are like terms because we did the square root of 9, which is 3. And so 3 minus 64 is negative 61. So check it out. We started with a binomial, um, but they were radicals, right? And um, with a radical in it. And then they were conjugates, and that basically got rid of the, the radicals. And we just got a regular whole number. So that is going to become important on the next section. I'll do that video next.